Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, to start off in the Sunken Valley today, we have a trap. Actually, this is a two-pronged trap. You can see the sniper, but also if you look closer at the item, meant to bait you in, Mibu Apparitions uh, try to burst out of the ground and grab you by the legs. Makes you an easier target for the other apparitions around you and also makes you a stationary target for the sniper. That's unfortunately a multi-layered trap that you only get to see if you do this in a certain order. The snipers are always there, but like we talked about last time, not so much for the apparitions. I love when they layer threats like this. This is something that Miyazaki and FromSoft do so, so well. They always give you extra things to consider. Even here they do it. There's the obvious one, and it's you- oh god! And it's usually just misdirection. The most famous example, one of the best ones, is still in the Tomb of the Giants in Dark Souls. The best one, the, the most gifable one. When you're crawling along the cliff, and you see the one skeleton, and you just dart right past him, but he is not the main threat. It's the one around the blind corner that kicks you off the ledge. But your attention isn't on what could be around the corner. It's just about dodging the immediate threat. It's such good game design. And speaking of good stuff, we get to fight one of my straight up favorite bosses in the entire game. Easily one of my top threes. but that will come much later. Uh, they drop a little lizard here, because remember the lizards can poison you, and also put an antidote powder, just to remind you that poison is a thing, and that acts as a little bit of foreshadowing, a little bit of, uh, of game design foreshadowing for something coming up. Just to put it in your head, I don't plunging attack this guy because it can be a little bit wonky. You saw it blinking as I dropped down. Oop. So I would rather have taken the uh, the reliable backstab rather than the plunging kill. That could have just resulted in an attack. Would have slowed down the kill on the second guy, which would have given this one more time to aggro and shoot me. Sekiro really, really encourages you to play smart. To just be observant and cautious. And that's the same thing with uh, with Bloodborne and Demon Souls and Dark Souls as well. It's drawing from a similar design playbook. Now let's think before we move forward. We've been fighting the sniper women of the Okami clan. We know that they have very good vision. So despite us not being able to see much there, we know there are long, completely unobstructed sight lines. And that's the final alarm bell. Kuro gave us the gun fort key, and now we know that the gun fort is coming up. And he even cautions you against going in recklessly. Open space is not a good thing here. Because the moment you plunge down, you do that, the, the what's up danger dive. You're immediately spotted. And there are are snipers at all angles on all level layers levels of the cliff uh and there's another snake eyes this one is shira fuji the other one was what shira hage they're both some play on a white flower a type of white flower we're not skipping shira fuji we're just running past her for now because jesus christ because uh, fighting her while there are so many lines of sight to you from the snipers all around the gun fort is suicidal. By the way, how do you like that bridge? 
It gives you such a, a cute little surge of adrenaline when you fall through it and then realize you can just keep on grappling. And it even provides you a little bit of cover when you fall through it like that. It's almost advantageous to take that fall, which you almost certainly will the first time through when you don't see it coming. Because again, it's all about misdirection. It's all about diverting your attention from one threat and catching you with something else. You're just panic running across the bridge at that point because you're being fired at from all angles. So you're not likely to notice the gap in the bridge. And now we're kind of safe. There's still way more inside the fort. And if we go back for Shirafuji, uh, there are quite a few more that can aggro and get lines of sight on you. Also, take note of how... Damn it. Well, I ruined my approach to this. There's so many of those uh, the lumps of, of clay and earth compacted down. And they're not quite landmines. They didn't hurt me. They're just meant to, like, snap, crackle, and pop. And get the enemy's attention. In case you make it here without aggroing very much. Uh, in retrospect, I would rather plunge on this dude. This is... Oh, God, I was gonna say it's okay, but now I'm being fired at. So we're gonna ignore you. God, the gun for it can be really, really rough. You really have to be thinking about lines of sight. And where you need to get to to prioritize picking enemies off, because there are a lot. Okay, we can go... Let's do this after this one turns his back, turns her back. That's one plunging attack. That's fine, even though there are two. I don't think the blood smoke will work too well, no. But still. As long as we don't have to fight him two on one. Crowd is controlled. And that's all that matters, really. See, that went okay. And to be honest, we haven't used that many consumables yet. There's still dangers left. Like, there's still snake eyes. There's still a few snipers. But we're through the hardest part of the gun fort. Where the difficulty can spike up really quickly. Also, snap seeds. Remember, from the, the medicinal catalog. And, uh where we've found snap seeds in the past. Just keep in mind, like, the context of that. Where have we found those before, and what has preceded finding snap seeds? Like, what do we know about them? Because it gives you a nice little bit of foreshadowing again against a another upcoming danger. Also, I thought I would definitely make that. So, I'm just going to tuck my tail between my legs and do the longer run around instead of trying that a second time. I mean, you should be able to make that. I don't know why I didn't. I was probably looking at the wrong grappling point. But yeah, this is, I guess, the safer option. Because <laughs> we're going to cross the bridge the opposite way and head back towards Snake Eyes Shirafuji and fight her. If not for completion's sake, then to at least get um, the prayer bead on her. Because I think we're three out of four right now. So that'll give us another health and posture upgrade. We've already, what, tripled the size of our health bar from the start of the game? Oh, and we can even get that cheeky backstab. Perfect. It's always nice to just not have to deal with that much health or posture when you're fighting these uh, even once you have the fight itself down it's just nice to save yourself the time boom do it nope do the kick now shoot oh and that's I guess what can happen when you miss time two in a row ouch one two three. Mistimed the middle one, this one. Again. Huh. 
That one's a little bit more delayed. Ooh, I got really lucky she didn't rake me in, because that can hit as an anti-air. Oh, I thought she was backstepping for a gunshot. Yeah, four out of four, great. That'll be our, I want to say our sixth prayer necklace. Now, as for loadouts, uh, I have a Divine Confetti on you saw. I think I paused at some point. If not, I have a Divine Confetti. And I'm rocking uh, the Loaded Umbrella and the Loaded Spear I have back on. Uh, that loadout is really just specifically suited to a boss coming up. We'll see each one of those things come into play. Now, I think there's nothing else to pick up here, so we'll make this jump one more time, get across the bridge, and proceed through the gun fort, finally. Now, you'll notice so far we haven't actually had anything to use that key on. So we could have come all this way long before defeating Genichiro. We could have gotten here. But not too much further in. You do still need that key to progress. So it creates uh, kind of a hard limit to what you can do before you finally go to the top of Ashina Castle and fight Genichiro. There's our sixth necklace. Look at the size of that health bar now. Still have a bunch more to go, too. Some spirit emblems, and there's nothing else that you can just blind jump to from there. So we'll just grapple back up. And you can hear... The blade scraping. Or another centipede. The last one was Sent Un. Is this long arm centipede giraffe? The fight is identical though. We are a little bit high on posture because I messed a few of those deflects up. That last one is the one I tend to miss the most. Because it's the one he delays the most. It's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Uh. And then, ooh, sometimes he just interrupts it early for that. It's these these mini bosses are really disappointing. To be honest, they're they defeat themselves, but they have such cool designs. A large fan made of dyed red Japanese aralia leaves can be fit into the shinobi prosthetic. Da da da. Creates a large vortex of wind, kind of like a ton of spiriting away those it catches. Divine abduction through an eight handed fan. Once is fine, but twice she'll never return. If abducted, we'll head to Mount Congo at Senpo Temple. We'll perform virtuous deeds. Last part's a quote. But from whom? Hmm. Statue's interesting. Now, down here, beneath the floorboards, we have yellow gunpowder. That's kind of a boring prize to claim, but there's a little bit more. Ah ha ha. Well disguised nooks and crannies. And if you listen carefully, You can hear two things. You can hear the croak of the geckos, and you can hear that familiar scraping of the centipedes. Oh, the terminology is confusing. The centipede wolverine enemy is not the mm, infestation centipedes. We'll go this way first. There's an item and a blind drop. And as soon as you drop down, there's a prayer bead, and you're surrounded by centipedes. That's why we heard those. Also, see how I took a little bit of poison buildup? Geckos. 
for the lizards, whatever kind of lizard they are. Ah, some divine confetti, one drops, and then a lot of them drop. Still not quite done down here. There's a little bit more to find. And now it should start making sense in your head where we are and where we're looping back to. This is really cool. The gun fort is just a really, really well designed and well put together area. From how they foreshadow threats to how they place enemies, everything about it I like. And then the actual construction of the level leads to clever stuff like that. And finally, a use for the gun fort shrine key. Which we got right after beating Genichiro, so we could have gotten up to this point and no further. And looky looky, coiled around the mountain. So we have the snake, we have what is clearly terrain below, and this obvious bridge. Which the snake will destroy. You can make it across on that go, but there's no need to because you'll come back here later. Now, because we can dive, we can mostly just get to this without alerting the snake. But... Snake does eventually notice you in here. You know what I just realized? They made a Spider-Man game. There's the grappling, yeah, but there, it's not just that, it's also the flashing danger kanji, almost like some kind of spider sense. FromSoft made a, a made a medieval ninja Spider-Man game. Once we rest, uh, the snake resets, and we can scour the lake bed for goodies like the Yashiriku's uh, sugar. I think it's mostly just coins and stuff down here, which will be handy once we go back and really start harassing the merchants for their goods. Why did I say harassing? Patronizing them? <laughs> Bothering them? <laughs> We have quite a few merchants. There is one that I finally realized that I missed. There's a memorial mob way in the beginning that I, I miss uh, around a pretty tricky corner back in uh, Ashina outskirts right before you get to the castle. I think it's, yeah, it's before the Chained Ogre fight, actually. I will have to go back for that eventually. And I was super confused when somebody pointed out that I had missed it. Because the game was still much newer then than it is now. I think that episode went up within the week that it came out. And I had no idea that it was there. And no idea what this person in the comments could possibly mean by I missed an NPC. But yeah, it's there, and we will show him. Now, we come back out here. To, uh, the Sunken Valley. Oh. Why are you like this? I can't grip the side of the, the edge of the cliff, I mean. Did you hear that little hushed breathing? Ah, and now we get the chimp noises. So there are some more monkeys lurking around. In fact, this is almost like the Gun 4 Part 2 because... Oh, there it is. And a pacifying agent. What could that be about? What could possibly cause terror around here? I mean, aside from getting shot at by sniper monkeys. And chased down by regular sword-wielding chimps. Of which there are quite a few. There's actually a, a boatload. Ow. They don't hurt that bad. Not as bad as the uh, snake-eyed Okami snipers. But look at this mob of them. They're guarding stuff, so you do kind of have to confront them if you want to grab things. Like another pacifying agent. 
once? Maybe it's just there coincidentally. You could rationalize to yourself. Even though everything is placed intentionally from the game designer's point of view. Like, there's no accidental placement. Two, you really have to stop and think, there's gonna be some kind of terror status afflicting me. There's no reason for two to be here otherwise. Ah, fruits of the serpent, yes. There are two kinds. One is fresh, the other is dried. Over there. The dried fruit is over there. Past the poison swamp. Down the nest. That's where you'll find it. What are you talking about? Dried fruit? Eh? Something troubling you? Rice for me. That's the way. Rice, I say. If something's not right, bless me with rice any time. There's some rice. Oh, 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 there's no doubt. This is the divine child's rice. Oh, thank heavens. Thank heavens. Tell me what you see. So that's why the beginning of the episode, we got uh, the antidote and also the the lizards to show us that there would be poison later on in the swamp here, in which there is some dried serpent fruit and a monkey who we should force to dance. We'll get back to that. Anyway, we got the rice from the divine child of rejuvenation and it made her give us some kind of weird vague hint but then also on this side look at how gigantic this arena is you need every inch of it because holy shit like actually holy shit he just threw shit at us and it would cause instant poison if it hits you by the way and a lot of damage this is my favorite boss, or one of them. Not the favorite, but definitely a top three. Look at how he moves. There's such a flow to all of his movements. God, he's fun to fight and look at. You can see that big ass sword through him and the scar running down his face. He has survived a lot. That's more than a buck fifty down his face. That's more than an Omar little scar. And he has two different perilous attacks, which are both really dangerous. He's got a grab, which thankfully has a fine hitbox on it. Not like the Chained Ogres. Like, look at that. If that was the Chained Ogre, we would have teleported into his palm. Now, I did take the Flame Vent off. Uh, you can hit him with the Flame Vent twice to set him on fire. It stuns him for a long time. There's that grab. It stuns him for a long time. If you set him on fire, you can get huge damage in. I don't think it's worth the Spirit Emblems, and I don't want to accidentally cycle to it. I just want my spear and my umbrella. And we'll see why. Now, despite his size, you can uh, deflect him and block him just fine. God, he's got such a such a kinetic feeling to him, such energy. And it's nice to have a boss like this that's just a big, giant animal fight. 
creates a, a, a lot of variety that you get this. And other fights like this, I should say. Hmm. The rhythm to his attacks is so good! And then there's that. Almost poisoned us. Followed it up with that. I like how they color code the poisonous anus attacks. The fart and the, the feces. There we go, there's that one health bar. And that's the best kill animation! And that's the fight. We even get our Shinobi execution, so we know it's over. God, that's a really good fight. <laughs> Love it so much. <sighs> Bitch, we're not done. Shut up. He's immortal. And now he's got the Odachi and he's running around with his head in the other hand. Ah, oh, this looks so good. <laughs> Coolest boss. Coolest boss. <laughs> also, at this point, he changes from a beast to an apparition. So divine confetti. That's what the terror is for, by the way. The pacifying agents. That's why. That big AoE scream he does in this phase. It, it builds terror up really quickly if you're nearby. But the umbrella not only blocks the damage over time it does when you're near him. It blocks the buildup of terror, which is why we have this equipped. Now, Divine Confetti, to clear the air, Divine Confetti always gives you a damage boost no matter what you're fighting, but it gains additional damage on top of that against apparitions. That's what he counts as now, not a beast anymore. And this is why I didn't want the flame vent. I didn't want to waste the spirit emblems when I could be using the umbrella, and I didn't want to accidentally cycle to that when I need to get back to the umbrella to block that. You can also just run away, but I'd like to be able to stay in close. Also, notice the way he moves is way different now. It's it's less ape-like. He almost slithers or wriggles. It's really off-putting either way. It lends him a real eerie quality. It's hard to put your finger on it on why though. Now, he's getting pretty low. I would like him to do one particular move, and I'm not going to end the fight until we see it. And I'll call... Uh. God, his moveset is so different now. I love it. I love this fight. Also, I forgot to turn... Uh, I forgot to go offline on Steam. And that's so well telegraphed, like, you move so fast when you're sprinting, you- there's no excuse to... to... take the whole thing and get terrorized. You can always see it coming and react, even if that means running away or getting the umbrella out. It's a really fair attack. There it is! Okay, got parry it. Nah, nah. This thing with the spear is... Yeah! If you double tap, it stabs and then pulls. It lets you yank armor off of some enemies or yank centipedes out. That's why he moves like that. The centipede is what's animating him in phase two. And you have to get that perfect parry to line that up properly. God, I love this. The guardian ape was defeated, though its re though its roar can still be heard. It said that an infested body marks the undying. The slender figure of a young woman uh, can be fitted to the shinobi prosthetic. Blah blah blah. Found in the belly of the guardian ape, it's partially digested. There is a shinobi technique called the finger whistle that can drive beasts wild. 
The one who used it before clearly used it for this purpose as evidenced by the finger's open hole. Oh. God, I love that fight a lot. Uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. Check out the links in the description, including those for the Twitter and my Patreon. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.